Thank you for tuning into another Open Dialogue webinar from Collision Repair Magazine. I'm Allison Rogers, the editor of Collision Repair Mag and your host for these Open Dialogue webinar sessions. Today, we're here with Michelle Carone, Massimo Petia, and David Hosaki of Solera Autodex Canada. And they're gonna be talking today about the captor rollout and um, just how everything went across the industry. We talked back in January, 2021 uh, about the captor estimating platform and as it was just coming into uh, Canada, the Canadian market. So uh, it's been quite a while since then. I've heard there's some updates. There's been some movement um, here, how the industry is liking it. But uh, let's just dive into some intros before we get started. I, I know Michelle, I know David, I know Massimo, but uh, let's make sure our readers get to know you and our audience as well. So could you guys just tell us a little bit about your roles in the industry, how long you've been in the industry and what your sort of job with Solera Autodex Canada is? We'll start with David. <laughs> we'll start with sure. David. Let me just make sure I'm not on mute. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah, so my name is Dave Hozaki. Um, I've been uh, with Autotech since 2007. So um, I basically grew up in the industry. My grandfather started auto body shops in his garage. Um, and then in 1958, he uh, opened his first body shop. Uh, we had a couple of them. Uh, we, so I was fortunate enough to work and, uh, and manage uh, in both of them. I've also worked in the technology sphere as well in the past. So when I came to Autotex, it was a wonderful little marriage of taking the technology and taking the auto body, putting it all together, landed at Autotex, and it was a dream come true. <laughs> um, first started off in field services, um, and then I built the technical support team in Canada, um, started working with the training uh, portion within our organization, uh, professional services, as well as um, as the product uh, manager for Captor in Canada. So over to you, Massimo. Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone. My name is Massimo Pecchia. I'm a product manager uh, for Autotex in Canada. Uh, I've been in the industry and working for Solera for just over uh, 18 years. Um, my, my background um, before entering Solera has been uh, more technical in the technology sphere. Um, but uh, I'm approaching like the 8 to 20 year mark of uh, being in this industry and I take care of any any implementation or or, or product uh, product rollouts uh, for Canada. Uh, Solera being a global leader, we try to utilize any products that we see fit the Canadian marketplace <clears throat> that is used in other countries and uh, try to roll them, roll it out within the uh, Canadian marketplace and some of the feature we're going to show you today is a result of, of exactly that. Thank awesome. you. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Michel Caron, VP of Sales. I've been with Autotex, uh, just hit 18 years at the beginning of the month. Um, so I've been in the insurance industry slash claims for I'm going to say 30 years now. I started off as an adjuster way back when. And believe it or not, uh, my ties back to the collision side actually date back to high school where I took a co-op program uh, and I worked at a body shop for uh, one of the terms. So uh, it's near and dear to my heart, automotive claims, workflow, uh, software. Um, look forward to uh, showing you guys a little bit of an update today of what we've been able to accomplish this last year. Absolutely. And uh, thank you all for introducing yourselves. We are, we really appreciate having you today. Clearly, we've got a lot of expertise on the line. Uh, David, you've been in the body shop industry. Everyone's got a little bit of a different background here. Uh, you've been in the body shop since you were a kid. Michelle, you've obviously did back to high school and you've worked in the claims for 30 years. So a lot, you've seen a lot of the shift of how estimating has changed in the last uh, couple decades and Massimo, of course, on the technical side as well. So we really appreciate all of you making time to be here today with us. Sure, our audience is really eager to hear an update as well. So we talked to you back in um, January 2021 when the Captor platform was just starting to roll out across Canada. Could you tell us kind of how things have moved since then in the last 18 months and um, where kind of your status is now with the rollout? Hey, it's hard to believe it's 18 months, but uh, yeah, uh, I was going through the old video uh, back in January 2021. Uh, it's hard to believe that it's 18 months later, but a lot has changed even with Captor. You know? So for the rollout perspective, we have all non-DRP and all DRP English Canada completed, right? So that's, uh, that's pushing around, I'm gonna say 85% of the client base. Our next stage is the Quebec market. Uh, we do have a few people that are on it in Quebec, which is not a mass rollout at this stage. 
we anticipate that later uh, next month, which we're at the end of August right now. So into uh, sept um, yeah, into September. Um, so the latter part of September, we'll have Quebec addressed. Um, but ultimately, what actually ended up happening is, you know, the last time I spoke, we we're talking about the digital transformation. So Capture is the platform or the foundation for us to get to the modern workflow. And what do I mean by modern workflow? Well, what did COVID actually bring in? It brought in digitization very quickly, right? So at that point in time, when we were talking around image capture and different stuff like that, we were talking more so around the workflows that our insurance partners have. But I don't even know if the ones that are on capture today, whether or not you realize within the admin screen, you have the ability to start an estimate from a photo, right? Or to capture it. And, David will go into the demo on that piece. But ultimately, Captor is the foundation for the modern workflow. So that way, the next stage, which we will be showing you today, is the ability to create an estimate or a preliminary estimate from a photo. So I know there's been lots of talks about that in the industry. Um, we're very pleased with how far we've come. Believe it or not, we've actually introduced photo to estimate capabilities about four years ago from a global perspective, and it's just more recently got into Canada. But what I can say is that the last four years, from what I saw originally to what we see today, it's not even anywhere near what it used to be. You know, there's so many iterations, so much learning, uh, so much processes that we understand, and it still takes full advantage of our inside out methodology takes advantage of our vehicle specific option driven database. And it actually brings in the rules of your insurance partner should you be using it for their profile. So it really is around creating a preliminary estimate from a photo without even touching anything within two minutes. So we're pretty proud of that. Mm -hmm. And the thought process behind adding these features uh, and just the capture rollout in general, were there specific uh, body shop requests or things you were hearing from your clients or just challenges that you saw from, you know, being a global leader in the claim space that you wanted to address with the capture rollout and specifically the new features that we're here to discuss today? Um, the reality is it's not a Canadian problem. It's a global problem. And I think the aging population or the lack of qualified uh, estimators that are coming into the industry is really uh, causing constraints within the workflow, right? So the reality is, is right now you have the ability or individuals have the ability with the photo to estimate. It doesn't have to be the estimator. You can actually have a CSR go out, take some photos of the car, come back in, and there's a preliminary estimate. So that way your staff appraiser or your estimator can actually go in and look at what was created, generated by the estimate or by the photo. So that is really you know, the forefront, uh, it's primarily used for smaller hits. Drivable cars are the primary, more the outer, outer mo most parts. But as the technology continues to evolve, and as indicated, it has been evolving steadily. Every estimate that goes in, it starts off with a preliminary estimate. We also have an understanding of what the delta difference is between the final estimate versus the estimate that was created to see how our machine can learn even more. But it's, it's truly remarkable to see how much it's uh, advanced already. Uh, so yeah, at the end of the day, we're addressing the constraints around the shop itself. Uh, also the ability to address digital, and we'll show you a little bit more of that through the demo, but I think actions speak a lot more than words. So, you know, at this point, I'd probably pass it over to David to start a demo to show exactly how the application works. Some of the key enhancements that we've done within the application and the reality is uh, the request image component, we saw that as I indicated before, an option that we're allowing our insurance partners to use. At that point, uh, we saw the great need for our shops to have that same capability. And that's an included operator, included feature functionality that's in capture today that any shop can take advantage of today as, they, as we speak. And we'll show you how to do that today. Yeah, absolutely. And as you're saying, Michelle, actions speak louder than words. So I'm just asking people here, how many people are using Captor estimating? Looks like the majority of people on here are using Captor. So without any further ado, let's just hand it over to David and get into the demo because that's what the people are here to see. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So um, as you can see, um, I'm actually in the Chrome browser. So um, as I mentioned the last time, you know, back way back when we built this thing about 17 years ago, um, 
90% of all internet traffic was done on Internet Explorer. So at that time, when we built Autotex Estimating, uh, we utilized Internet Explorer and obviously the ActiveX tools uh, that went along with that. Um, fast forward to today, we've got 60% of all internet traffic on the Chromium platform. Uh, and when I say Chromium platform, I do mean uh, the Chrome browser as well as the Edge browser, which is also built off that Chrome platform. So um, that's why I'm in Chrome here. Um, and you can use this on basically any browser. Um, as you can see, I'm at auditechsolutions.com. That's the same one that you all know and love and you've been using for years. Um, when we are on the main page, there's a couple of uh, important things for me to point out to you. Uh, you know, the, the challenge with change is um, we're not ever ready for it. Um, so when all of a sudden we have an interface change and it looks a little bit different, we get very confused. So um, when you are on that main screen, you can simply select on this picture here where it says it's time to upgrade to capture estimating. When I select on that, that's gonna take me to a page where I can actually um, sign up for live training. Um, so that live training um, we have Right now, we've got it going all the way out to the end of September. You can also view a pre-recorded video of the on-demand training. I highly suggest that you do that um, because what we did with Captor is we've made it so close to uh, the original just because we wanted to make sure you kept your same workflows. We wanted to make sure that you knew where everything was. So. Um, because it's that little bit different, you're going to be reaching for something that you've been doing for the last 17 years, and uh, you, and you're going to wonder where the heck it is. So, I highly suggest you do the training. You can also go to my support garage, which we have a couple of links on that main page as well. Okay, on the my support garage, we've got all the documentation that you could possibly want for Captor estimating as well. But I'm just going to log in with my ID here, and so once I log in we're gonna to get to that work list. And now you can see that we've got, even from the last time that we uh, showed this, we have a couple of subtle differences and one of them is color. So our branding has changed a little bit. So you can now see that we've got, instead of the orange, we've got the uh, purple and blue. Um, and everything else sort of stays the same as far as the way everything is sort of laid out, nice and easy with that news feed style um, work list. We've got that help center where you can click on, you can watch any sort of video for anything that you uh, have questions on. So that's really super easy. The other great thing that we have on here is a support and feedback. Um, we take that feedback that we get from you very, very seriously. Um, this is unlike when you send a message to say Microsoft or something to say, hey, I wish you could do this. Um, I suggest that uh, if you have some a suggestion, utilize the support and feedback. You can contact our support team or you can give feedback on any um, suggestions that you may have in there as well. Okay. Um, so as we notice down that left-hand side, we used to have a whole lot of information and, and buttons to click on there. We streamlined that down and you've noticed that all the buttons are a little bit bigger. The reason why we've made all our things a little bit bigger and easier to hit is we can also use this on any tablet as well. So um, makes a lot easier for when you're using your fingers and you're pushing and clicking on things. So now you can uh, easily do that with the way that we've laid out that menu. The one thing that we have done, which has really um, changed uh, the performance, and you know, one of the things that you, you know we're always concerned about is how is the performance of our software. Um, we found that there was some lag when you're uh, looking through your lists of of uh, claims. So what we've added back in is that uh, pages. So you can see down here at the bottom, I've got number one. I also have a two. I can go the multiple pages that I may have, I can go to my last page or go back to my first page, depending on the page that I'm at. So that's going to make things a lot faster, a lot easier for you. The other actually great thing that uh, <laughs> we've been utilizing and it's been great is just the simple Windows feature where you do the control, hold your control button down, hit your F uh, at the same time. And if you type in, say, uh, 2019, I can see everything that comes up for 2019 nice and easily for me that's on the screen so I can easily get to what I'm looking for. And that's not even captured, that's just built into your uh, windows. So nice and easy for that. 
if you're looking for all of those other things, um, now you can do that right along the same line what you, uh, of your claim. So when you look at this particular claim, we can see nice and easily with the color coding of what that status is. Um, but then we can easily get to our reports. We can easily get to our comments and we can do a number of different actions right from here uh, for that particular claim that we're on simply by selecting on the three dots or the ellipse that we call it. And then you have these number of shortcuts to get to specific places within your estimate, as well as, hey, I don't need this anymore. I can hide it. I can copy it, print it, email it, export it to my management system or any other thing that I'm using for my Sika exports, uh, letter files, and I can actually move work as well. Okay. The other great thing is uh, the one thing that drove me a little bit crazy is when I wanted to search for something, I had to click on search, took me to a different page. Um, now we've got the search built right into the work list. You click on it. It puts the little drop down for you. You can type in your claim number or your own or last name and search it. And it's right there for you, right on your work list. You're already there and you can click into it. So that's gonna make your life a lot easier as well. All right. So I'm just gonna get into a, a assignment that I started um, so we can have a quick look. And um, so I'm gonna click on this guy here. <clears throat> And as this opens up, this gets us into the admin screen. This is much like that quick admin screen that you've seen before in our old auto text estimating. It gives you all your quick pertinent information right up front. If you want to um, go into your contacts, uh, make any changes in here, uh, inspection information, so your estimator name or any of your uh, important dates that you need to fill out, they're all right there on that first page. So nice and easy tabs that go across the top instead of having to go over to that left side and click on the buttons and changing pages all the time. Now we're just going from tab to tab. So it's gonna make life a lot easier. So if I wanted to make a change in here, I can just go in here and uh, type in whatever I needed to do. And then select on save. Okay. Now, one of the things that Michelle had mentioned to you already was we've introduced something called request photos. This is something that um, is included within captor estimating. So as you can see here, we've got our owner information and we've got that phone number there. Um, we can select on request photos. When I select on that, we have that person and their phone number. So you can send this uh, I, um, a text to the owner and they can take the pictures. Once they take those pictures, it'll show up right in the estimate. We're gonna actually show that to you today. The other neat thing that you can do, and this is how I see a lot of shops doing this, is I'll just put in my own uh, phone number, my own cell phone number, and this is, um, that way I can send that link to myself. Once I send that link to myself, I'll be able to add in, take those pictures from my camera, and they will show up on uh, that estimate for you already as well. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna transfer that um, text over so we'll be able to see it. So once I have that text, I can click on the link in that text and it's going to bring this up on your phone. And we've decided to do this on the computer so you can see it a lot better, but it's gonna look exactly the same for you on the phone. So we can see here, we've got some quick tips for you on uh, how to take those pictures. We do have to agree to the terms and service and then we hit um, the start button. Once we select that start button, we can go ahead and add those photos um, because, oh, looks like my cam's not working. So we're gonna add from library and I'll just do this, wherever the heck that went. <laughs> Yeah, it's likely just happening because your camera's already in use for the webinar. So, oh, right. Yes. It's not a glitch or anything like that. It's just because David's <laughs> on the computer here and he's trying to double up on the camera. <laughs> right. Okay. So, let me see what I can do here then. 
because I should get my pop up on my. There we go. Uh, uh, uh. So I'm just going to add in a photo. We can see we've got the photo that we want. Go ahead and confirm. Again, you're going to have that button on your phone as well. I apologize for the little bit of clunkiness here, but we work with what we got. <laughs> so I'm just going to add in like maybe uh, three or four photos here um, just so we can see it and work. Yeah, so David, I think the part that they did, they did not see is when it does go to text, right? So I just sent the text to myself and it says, uh, hi, so-and-so, let's get your car repaired as quickly as possible. Click here to get started and then there's a link. And that's automatically bilingual as well. So regardless, it's gonna address both English and French right off the bat. So, and then as, as indicated, there's nothing you're downloading. The client is not, is not required to download anything. And obviously the steps that David is showing here, are the steps that the client would take uh, taking from their, their own car. Perfect, thanks, Michelle. Um, so now that I've got the photos that I want in there, I'm just gonna select on the next button. Um, and if we wanted to add additional photos, we could do that. Um, I have a button that I can't see over here, I think. Oh, did I put, I may have put them in the wrong place. We do have a question here from um, the audience yeah. just asking, um, is it is there an option for the customer to ask what a VIN is, where it could be located, or any guidance for the customer to, you know? Um, it's not a bi uh, bilateral communication, unfortunately, um, but uh, they should be able to contact you if they have any questions, though. Gotcha. And Scott Lavery is wondering if you need to select a language or if it drives from IP address. Uh, it comes through as bilingual anyway, so it, uh, it's addressing both. Perfect. So it just automatically comes through as English and French. Correct. And Bill Speed is wondering, I was wondering the same here, is it possible to select if you are doing as David's doing here, dropping the photos in, can you select multiple at the there. same time or do you have to do it one at a time? Um, well, what it's doing actually, because when it comes to your phone, it's going to do that sort of step by step. So as you take yeah. that picture, you confirm it and then you just add your next photo. So at this time, that's what, what it's doing is it's allowing them to go walk around and take okay. those photos. Uh, so in this step, you wouldn't necessarily be dropping and dragging like David's doing. It's just the glitch that we have our camera already in use. You would be seeing <laughs> photos and it would be telling you, you just click a check mark each time. So it would be far more streamlined than what we're showing right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, now that I've got all those photos loaded in, we do have a quick little sh share feedback. So I'm going to give it a little four there. I hit submit. Thanks for the feedback. Um, and then I'm just going to close this window because we don't need it anymore. So we can see we're back at that estimate now. Um, I'm just going to make sure I've got all my vehicle information filled out properly. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, that looks good. Um, And now we can see that we've got those photos that I've added in. All right. Okay. We've got one other question here from Rick Frazier asking if the system will automatically ask the customer or the person taking the photos to provide all of the mandatory mandatory images for the insurance carrier if the file is set up for an insurance claim. Yeah, at, at this time, for the ones that you have uh, coming straight from your captor estimating, we don't have that because they could do whatever they want, depending. It's not, uh, there's no insurance guidelines that uh, we wanted to uh, restrict you to um, because let's say it was just a walk in off the street um, they needed to get those photos um, so you could just shoot that off and, and they can do it that way uh, if we had that guidelines and then they couldn't skip over certain things or something like that it could drive them a little crazy maybe they're parked in their underground parking they can't get to all four corners uh, stuff like that. So uh, at this time, we have it just so they can add whatever photos that they want. Mm -hmm. um, and we did have, as you saw at the very beginning, where it sort of gave you uh, those guidelines on on how best to take those pictures, though. We have another person asking here if uh, the one photo at a time versus batching. As we just explained, just the way that David's doing it right now, it's usually you do this on your phone, you'd snap a picture, it would pop up with a check mark, and you'd just press yes, and you'd be walking around the car doing this. 
Exactly, exactly. So while I'm actually in the photos section or the attachments section, I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to select on one um, that I can see here. And one of the neat things that we can do is we can mark up those photos now. Back in the old days, for those of you who have used our old, um, our old shop link, um, we could go in here and we could mark things up. Um, but we had to take that away from you because any um, any edited photo is no longer admissible in the court of law. So we took that away from you and we heard a lot of feedback from people saying, hey, uh, I really want that back. Uh, so what we've done is we've added this in where we could do things like we can uh, mark them up. And then what it would do is it would just create a uh, another version of that estimate. We still have that original one there, um, but now it's created a duplicate one with those markups on it. So that's sort of how we got around it, but it's a really good feature that we brought back for you. Um, and I hope you guys um, get to utilize it because it's really cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna delete that one that I had on there and we should be good. So one of the things that uh, Michelle had talked a little bit more about uh, as well is not only do we have that ability now to uh, get those photos, get the request out and have our um, our vehicle owners just go ahead and take those pictures and they automatically go into our assignment and or estimate. Um, we also have something called visual intelligence and I'm going to click on that button now and um, we're going to get to that uh, screen and while I do that, um, I'm going to pass the mic over to Asimo Pekia. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Thanks, Dave. Uh, so this is where we like to introduce visual intelligence, or VI for short. This is where we continue uh, what we call the, the modern workflow to get from photo to estimate. So as you can see here, the photos that were already attached oh, to the estimate. No, it's fine. <laughs> the photos were already attached to the estimate. And as Dave showed you, you can mark it up. You can add more, delete. But at that point, you just simply hit continue, right? And as, as Dave's showing you, it's going through a little bit of a process. And this is going from photo to estimate, creating that preliminary estimate. So in under two minutes, uh, you will get a preliminary estimate ready to be validated. <clears throat> so exactly what it's doing is, as you can see, some uh, labeling under its, the progress bar there. Uh, it is using our AI infrastructure with computer vision to detect the photos, detect the, de uh, the parts on the photos, the damages, and then coupled with our repair signs to create that optimum operation for that part. So when it's creating that estimate, it will do a repair to replace decision. So it will make that termination whether a repair or replace is the most suitable option. And what, excuse me. And when it does that, uh, that decision, it's not just simply a repair versus replace OEM cost um, decision. It's not comparing the two. It actually will do a lifetime APU search. And this is a live inventory search of alternative parts. So we'll search the inventory of all of, all of our alternative parts supplier. And if there exists a alternative part, where, whereas if it's aftermarket or recycled, and if that's the most optimum part to use, it will input that into the estimate. So as you can see, this was, I think, under a minute and a half, you have the results back. And as you can see, we, we chose this vehicle to exemplify the, the different aspects that it, that it detects. As Michelle pointed out, uh, the VI scope currently is for outermost uh, damages. So the outermost parts, for example, the hood, fenders, and glass. So it will detect uh, damage to glass, headlights, tail lamps, et cetera. And what it does here, as you can see, it, uh, it puts a little contour around the around the damage. So Dave, you just want to click on one of the photos. So as you can see, it will outline the with the contour, the, uh, the damage part. This comes in very handy because that screen there is now a visual representation uh, to quickly review the, the results of, of the VI. And it will actually, you know, bring the appraiser's attention, especially if it's a small dent or cracks on cracks in the glass or the the, the headlamps, sometimes it's hard to see with the, with the photo until you start zooming it out. So it actually brings your attention to show you all the different uh, damaged parts uh, to the estimate. So Dave, just wanna close that off there. So along the top, what you see is just some uh, 
pertinent information about what parts are damaged, um, some information about the, the number of damages, the number of parts, and there's also a confidence level. So the, the AI model will produce a confidence level of how confident it is in this estimate that it created uh, and produce it up there just to, once again, visually show the appraiser the confidence level so you know uh, how much validation you, you may need to do. And then to the right of that, you have the, uh, the gross total. So as you can see, this, this went from a $0 estimate to, oh, sorry, something's blocking that. There you go, to just under $1,200 in less than two minutes. And then here they can quickly view the photos. They see the contours as mentioned. Uh, they can see the, uh, the confidence level for each damage. And also if they choose to remove a particular damage, let's say it's unrelated, they can simply toggle that switch, that little orange toggle, and they'll get the choice of whether this, there was no damage or if it's uh, not related. And that'll automatically update the estimate. So this, uh, this new module here, visual intelligence, has created that estimate based on photos. And yes, it, it may look like this is geared for the low severity hits of drivable vehicles, uh, which is true. You'll get the, the most accurate estimate when it covers, when the damages cover the outermost panels. But a lot of appraisers are now starting to use this to assist them with even potential tool losses because a lot of times you just want to get to that threshold. And if it's a potential total loss, although you may have to, of course, do the tear down and put in all the interior parts, it gets you started. So a lot of people have found efficiencies in time savings in at least letting the VI start the estimate for them or get to that threshold sooner. Because we know yeah. a lot of times, once it passes that threshold, you're not doing much with that vehicle. So why not have the automation, the VI, get as much of the damages that it can see on the estimate, and then you just do the little bit of tweaks to get you over that, that threshold. We've got, a couple, we've got a couple of questions here, Master. Absolutely. Popping in. Um, Kevin LaBelle wants to know, once you've initiated the part search function, when it's loading there, are you able to cancel it or stop it, or do you have to wait till it goes through? Yeah, correct. Once you hit continue, it, you have to wait for it to go through. Uh, like I said, it's under two minutes, and it it will create the um, the preliminary estimate for you. Perfect. Then after that, um, as, as Dave is going to show, you're going to see all the, the, no the normal damage entries that you would normally write yourself. In the damage page, you will see the report and you can make any modifications that you see fit. You can validate the estimate, complete it, or make any modifications if there's any um, interior damage that you need, that you need to add. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Scott Lavery here was just saying he he saw, thought that he saw it, like it, missed, it missed some damage on the fender behind the wheel well. So in the event that they, it's not going to pick up on every single little thing, you just manually note that. Yeah, we're, we're, you know, the objective here is not to replace the estimator. The objective here is to accelerate a preliminary estimate and let the estimator do what they do best, validate, make sure that everything was caught there. Uh, you may have some various different rules that uh, are outside of you know, the various insurance company rules that you want to overcome, you know, so you, you have the ability to edit everything that's there. This is just to try and create a very quick preliminary estimate up front. Mm -hmm. Correct. At the end of the day, the appraiser has the final say what this estimate should look like. This is there to assist, to assist them to get to that end product faster. Perfect. And uh, I'll let Dave take over, but as you can see, he's going to about he's showing you the, the damages, everything here, uh, because we started from a, an assignment, uh, everything here was generated um, by the AI model um, in under two minutes. So Dave, do you wanna take over? Great stuff, thanks Massimo. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone down to the damages. Um, and this, so this is the damage page that you're used to seeing. Um, and I just selected onto the damage list so we can see everything. So once we're here in this damage list, we're able to see that we've got that front fender, we've got a four hour repair, we've got a refinish, um, they've got R&I the headlight, um, R&I the front bumper cover, we've got that um, mirror housing, and they've got it replaced, recycled. So what this did is it went through the APU and it did the check for it um, and found a, um, a mirror housing for it. We've got in our adjustment and our value, 
Um, and we can see here, notice there's a little blue dot there beside the comments, um, and this is your line um, remarks. When I select on that, we'll be able to see what it did. So when we look at this, we can see, and this all depends on how you've got your supplier code set up. So we've got some Quebec ones in here. So um, when we're trying to demo those two, uh, we've got some of that. So we can see it's got all those comments from us, as well as that APU quote number and stock number and the contact person that you can reach out to as per APU. So those APU notes uh, do come in just like we saw. Okay. Um, and then we've got some other, um, the rest of the other little things, we've got that door repair, we've got uh, 2.1 uh, repair on that door shell, as well as the refinish and some RNIs on the belt moldings. And so machines. obviously the estimate would have been much larger, <laughs> had some rates in there from an hourly rate, but uh, <clears throat> you know, you see, you see the premise behind <clears throat> how it all works, right? Yeah. So the other thing that we have on here, if you notice, there's a little blue checkbox here. This blue checkbox um, is an open damage item. So we've had this all along. You've probably seen this in Autotex estimating as well as your captor estimating. And what this originally was used for um, prior to visual intelligence was you could select off those ones that you weren't sure about. So when you're out there looking at a car um, and there were things that were possibly um, uh, damage, but you can't see everything until you get it torn down. I personally would go out there and, and add them, check mark them off and mark them as open. And that way, um, when I went back in and had the tear down, I knew which ones I need, needed to look at uh, myself. What we're utilizing it now for visual intelligence now is saying, okay, well, let's have you just validate that this is something that is, um, that, um, you want to have. Once you're, if you're happy with that, then we can simply unselect that open damage item and then you'll be good to go. If for example, I left that on and I went to try and close that claim, I would get a notification that says there are open damage items existing for this estimate and you need to make sure that you fix those first. So we would need to go back, identify those open damage items so it's saying, hey, you didn't validate <laughs> this thing. Are you sure you want to be able to do this? So we're going to make sure that we did it. We definitely want to make sure that we have that. Um, we can carry on. It, let's say we needed to add something else onto this estimate. We could do that. Let me just get rid of this little pop-up here. And then once, if we have added more things, we can then easily go to that APU search, nice and easy to find now, right along the top there. Um, APU search, you click on that. And it's funny because I did watch that video from uh, from last year. And uh, last year, I, I think I believe I said it was uh, 60 seconds or 30 seconds to, uh, to get the APU run um, and return those results and put it back into your estimate. Well, now we're at the 15 second mark. So um, I don't know about you, but I know when I was in the shop, I'd pick up the phone, call the supplier, I've been dealing with these guys for ages. So first you talk about your kids, then you talk about uh, what you're doing this weekend, and then you're asking about those parts on the car and trading that information. By the time you get off the call on the first guy, um, you're 20 minutes into the call. <laughs> so uh, 15 seconds is a heck of a lot faster than uh, 20 minutes per supplier. Um, so we're able to do that nice and quick. And I'll just click on that APU button just so you can see it comes up nice and quick for us. And then it will give us that validation of what parts what we need to do. <clears throat> um, and so it's looking at those ones that we have on there now. So I'm just gonna close that down. Once we're, uh, once we're ready, we can go ahead and run our estimate check if we need to for that particular insurance company. Um, and then we're off to the races. So that is your visual intelligence you know, like Michelle had said, you know, one of the key things is we're getting those photos. It's giving us a preliminary estimate. We're no longer having to write it. We're now validating it. We're now making sure that, A, we've got the right parts on there. We're making sure that, hey, are those times good? Um, did I put on those things that I need to, to do for this particular um, either insurance company or uh, profile that I'm writing on? and I'm able to add anything else that I need to do. And then um, we're off to the races. The other thing that we did have on there that I don't think we showed last time is the ability to do 
uh, drag and drop of photos as well. So I'm just going to bring this guy over here so you can see it. Um, and I'm just going to grab one of these photos. And I'm just going to grab it and drop it right into the box. <clears throat> Okay, and there we go, we've got that photo there for you. So it makes things a lot uh, easier if we have them already stored, we can just drag and drop our photos in, no problem. So <clears throat> that may um, answer some of those questions for, um, for those of us uh, who are doing those appraisals and saying, hey, um, can I just add in photos? And, and yeah, we can just drag and drop them right in here. We can also just select on that button and get that standard thing that we saw before where we get to add, uh, select the ones that we want and add them in. Okay. How are we doing so far? Uh, lots of questions on um, the visual intelligence um, section here. It seems like a lot of people want to know some more about that. So first up, um, Kevin LaBelle, uh, you can kind of decide between Massimo and David who's best to handle each of the <laughs> questions. But, uh, Kevin LaBelle says that they like to make the preliminary estimate with all OE parts. How can they make that happen with Captor? Yeah, so that, that can happen. So what, what it's doing when it goes through the visual intelligence is if you are set up for APU, it'll do an APU search. But if you are not set up for APU, then the, the, the decision it'll do is a repair to replace OEM decision. Yeah, and when Massimo says if you're set up, and I know that some of you already have APU, so that's great, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean whether you subscribe to it or not, it's whether we've set that up on the visual intelligence itself. Gotcha. Dwayne Rodriguez uh, wants to know if you're notified once the photos have been submitted uh, through virtual into, uh, visual intelligence, I guess, and what is the accuracy of the current BI-driven preliminary estimate, if we have numbers on that? <laughs> yeah, so um, with the first question, uh, no, I, I don't believe currently we have a notification once the, um, the customer, whoever gets the text, hits submit, it uh, automatically will attach to the assignment. Your, your best indicator is when you're looking on your work list, you will see the number of attachments increase from 0 to 5, 14, what have you. Um, and then the, the, the accuracy of the eye. Yeah, so that's, uh, that, that's subjective. Uh, like I mentioned before, some people use this for potential total losses. So the perception of the accuracy, of course, will be lower. But that's simply because it's being used as a tool um, just to get to that final, that final estimate to to speed up their process. But when you're talking about um, looking at the parts that uh, visual intelligence covers, which is the outermost panels, um, we, we go with what's called an F1 score, right? So that's something you can easily Google. It's, uh, it's not a auto text made up formula. Um, that is a statistical formula that we use. And we, uh, try to, we try to stay whenever we're making updates to the model to be at 85% or better. For the, for the F1 score, because that will take into account any false positives or false negatives, uh, that particular formula. Perfect. Uh, Bill Speed wants to know if the system will factor in blends on adjacent panels in an estimate. Uh, yes, currently, actually, that is one of the updates that we did. Uh, we incorporated uh, blends on adjacent, uh, on adjacent panels. So yes, if you do a or a repair or place on, on the door, the, um, for example, the fender will get the, the blender finish. Awesome. Nice picture. Jonathan Pazim Pazimo, sorry about the last name there. Uh, do we have to pay extra for visual intelligence or is it just something that we ask to be activated? Yeah, currently, yes, visual intelligence is an, is an add-on to the estimating platform um, because it is, um, add on functionality to, to improve your efficiencies, but it's, uh, it's similar to, you know, adding on estimate checker APU is, is it's an add on to the estimating uh, platform. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Thank you. Al McNeil wants to know um, when it chooses the recycled parts, the visual intelligence tool, does it factor or the APU search rather, does it factor in the cost of the OEM part and choose the most cost effective automatically or how does that work? Uh, correct. Yeah, he explained it exactly the way it works. Um, when it looks at the, the replace costs, it will compare between the OEM and any alternative parts uh, that it finds, and it will choose the most cost effective part. Mm -hmm. cool. 
Uh, Stefano Liesi just wants to know if we can see a draft of this estimate uh, after it's complete, just so we can see the operations and included line items for this sample. Oh, yeah, the report. Yeah, I'm sure Dave can easily yeah, show that. Yeah. Pull that up. We can do that at the end too, if that fits better. Yeah, yeah if there's more questions that yeah, we can uh, continue sure. on. So we've got another one from Scott Lavery here. Um, if it's constantly updating from the info, if it's constantly updating info from the estimates written and people are using it for total loss and not submitting supplements or writing in your, or writing inaccurate as estimates, how will that skew the data you're, you're collecting? I guess they're just wondering if there's any way for that data to be skewed by the fact that people are using total loss and not submitting supplements or perhaps writing inaccurate estimates. Uh, no, but uh, so the, the model, the way it works is is based on computer vision. So it's taking all the, the billion of photos that we have globally and training the model uh, to detect the part and detect the damage, right? So nothing gets skewed in terms of how a person writes an estimate. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it translates to the actual uh, estimate body, it chooses the correct operation. So based on what it detects, if it's a dent larger than 50% of the panel, it may automatically choose a replace. So it's going to pick a replace. So there's no, um, there's no direct uh, effect of previously written estimates on this. This is about translating what gets detected by the AI model into an operation, whether it's a replace or, or a repair. And that decision is based on the, the photo that it sees at that time the the size of the damage the type of damage right scratch will be less severe than a, a dent than a missing part etc exactly yeah so the ai isn't learning from someone that and a user error it's not going to learn from someone making a mistake no the, the, AI, the ai machine learning uh we do we do have things in the, in the pipeline to predict um some most commonly replaced parts uh, that'll use the uh, estimate data, but we're talking about we're going to be using tens of thousands of estimates. So you would have to have a large number of incorrect, quote unquote, incorrect estimates to actually skew the data. Just like any 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 type of data analysis, you need a large amount to to skew because we do use uh, a large data set. Mm, it's controlled for sure. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, one more question here uh, from Kevin LaBelle. When replacing a welded on panel, does it add repairing and refinish spot weld burns on adjacent panels? Uh, no, it doesn't go that far into the, into the operations. It'll, it'll do what is normally done when an appraiser would uh, double click on a part. So it'll do the replace and associated refinish. Uh, same thing with the repair. It will give you a judgment time like in this case the front fender gave a judgment time of four hours and it provides the automated refinish time that the the estimating database would have calculated so it, it's exact same um, formula that is used if you were to choose that part manually gotcha. okay it doesn't make assumptions though if you were going to be yeah, it, like yeah it, it, it'll make yeah it'll make some assumptions for example it, um, when we saw the open damages, there's some RNIs where it may be affecting the assessment. So it'll ask the appraiser to, to weld it, uh, sorry, to add it into the estimate. Uh, but anything above and beyond that, uh, that's for the expertise of, of the appraiser, uh, including you know, any hidden damage. Mm -hmm. Just a comment here from Jean-Marc Julien. He said, uh, this estimate does not account for the blend quarter as the damage is within 18 inches from the end of the door or bumper repair for that matter or aim headlights. Oh yeah, I do see that. So that's uh, that's most likely just a configuration because the, the blend is a configuration that can be turned on and off. Uh, there's a few configurations and blend is one of them that um, we can choose to have it turned on to assign the blend or turned off. Um, and just, just to give you some more examples, other things that can happen that you don't see here, we can automatically uh, input a pre and post scan operation. Um, so that can be done as well. Um, so there, there is some configurations that can be added and that's how we make uh, the, uh, the visual intelligence and not just a one for all, but it can be uh, more specific per, you know, per insurance client or, or for the shops in general. So yeah, yeah, unfortunately it's turned off in this case, um, but 
it's because that is a configuration that can be turned on and off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Many and I, I, Sorry, go I think that I was just going to say, I think that speaks to, I, I believe it was uh, Bill Speed's question on to see the estimate, to see what else was added on there. Um, because he, I think you, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but uh, um, but I think you wanted to see if there was anything else that was sort of added in there. And those are, as Massimo mentioned, those are uh, customizable, configurable things that we would have uh, added in uh, at, you know, based on, on preference. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. We're talking about things like blend, um, the pre and post scan alignments. For example, if the wheels were placed, it'll automatically add an alignment. Uh, these are all different configurations. Um, if the majority of our users see that it's useful to automatically add to the estimate, that's a configuration we can turn on, turn on and off. So yeah, our, our modern workflow, it, workflow is a culmination of, of a lot of parts working together in harmony. And you have the, the vehicle detection, you know, the auto event to decode that vehicle. You have the visual intelligence to detect the damage. You have our estimating database to create that operations. And then we have some configurations based on um, industry standards that we can apply. Excellent. So, oh, we've got another question here from Pam Acorn. Uh, will the VI estimating system replace a one-time use part instead of putting it a repair and inspect R&I, uh, belt, i.e. belt molding, for example? Uh, no, it'll it'll do the replace. So it's all based on the, on the database. <clears throat> so if the, just as, as it is today, if uh, the database allows a repair for that part, then it will make that determination repair or replace. Uh, but if it doesn't, if it's a, if it is a one-time use and we don't allow the repair operation, it will just uh, choose a replace. Um, that's that's all being decided based on our, our repair science, which is our estimating database. Kevin LaBelle, again, as an estimator, he says, where do we go to make those permissions? So when we write an estimate, all those lines are added, are those just in your settings or when you set up the platform? Yeah, that, that's when we, we, we set up the platform. Um, that's something that, um, uh, on the audit tech side, we would make those changes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you'd want to make sure that you're uh, on the audit tech side, you're making sure you communicate what you want on your settings and uh, what your desired preferences you do not miss out on the line items there. Yeah, correct. And we, we should, and of course, like, like many things, it's, uh, it's where we see the, the, the most impact, what is uh, standard practice in industry, uh, you know, we'll typically turn that on for for all users it's not it's not really configuration you know mm -hmm. per individual shop because you can imagine doing that config that kind of configuration for thousands of shops out there yes. so it's typically um uh, industry standard we'll 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 turn it on and it will be available for everyone so it's not like a a request that um okay, gotcha. every individual shop has to make perfect all right so we're nearing the end of our uh, session here. I think if there's uh, any more demonstration uh, items you guys would like to show, um, we've got some, we might get some more questions in, but we've got about 10 minutes left. So if you have any uh, questions that you've been wondering about, be sure to get them in the chat in the next little bit. Um, but uh, thank you so much to everyone for watching. Was there anything else on the demo side that we wanted to show here? Um, I think we've covered most things, um, most things that are new anyway, as well. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, there again, I think the most important thing is for us to be able to go in uh, to do that training. Um, one of the things that we found is that, uh, you know, we, ha we do have people calling in and, and uh, have a lot of questions and, and are concerned about some things. Um, and once they've done that training, they, they're, they're like, I actually had this one gentleman who said, yeah, you know what, Dave, I take it back. Captor's so much better now. <laughs> uh, and it was just after he, done, he did his training. So, um, so important that we do, because like I said, we are following the same workflow that we've been doing forever. Um, it's just that when we go to click on something, it's not where we expect it to be. And so then, you know, hey, you know, I, I, I know myself, I'll go, okay, now, now I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Okay. So um, do the training. I think it's, uh, it's super important to be able to do that. Um, and that's just gonna make your life so much easier. Uh, I think that training is like an hour or an hour and a half long. Um, uh, again, you can watch that um, 
you can watch the on-demand one. You can even download that on-demand one. So you can kind of watch clips on it whenever you want as well. So I think it's an important thing. Other than that, I think, you know, really, again, once you've done that, uh, your life becomes so much easier. Um, and we've heard from a lot of people saying that it's made their life uh, so much better. We've had yeah. some really good feedback. Uh, when we even... look... I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, when we look back at, you know, as we rolled out uh, this product, uh, we wanted to make sure that everybody was comfortable. And if you, for those of you who, um, who were using it, and before we even rolled it out, we said, hey, listen, we're going to give you um, the ability to use Captor and the ability to flip back to Auditex Estimating 8. When things get crazy, you can do that. But you know, which is very rare. You usually you get a new version and, and you just got to fend for yourself. So we gave you like a month to be able to figure things out and understand it better because it's so important to us. We know that when you're in the shop, when you're writing estimates, you don't have time to think about it. You don't have time to be figuring stuff out. So we gave you that ability to flip back and forth. Uh, we gave you that ability to have that time to do the training. If you haven't done it yet, again, we've got lots of training dates uh, scheduled for it. So nothing to worry about there. Um, but as we saw, and as we rolled out each region, um, we looked at the calls into support and surprisingly very, very low. A lot of the questions were training questions. You know, how do I do this? And we know that they, would, they didn't do the training, um, but um, yeah, do, do the certification, do the training, and uh, it's going to make your life infinitely better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just want to interject that uh, like last week, we we're in a couple shops and uh, the request photos, you know, I, I highly recommend just playing around with it yourself, understand if you are going to use it with your customers, how, you know, what does it look like as it comes in on your phone, test it out yourself, so that way you can answer any relevant questions that the customer may have. But, uh, you know, they started using this as an internal tool. You know, we saw them going around with the photos, you know, taking pictures, taking the SD card out, replugging it in, trying to get it attached to the file. Literally each request in each various estimate or assignment that you have, it'll go back attached to that specific one. So it's not like you're trying to search and catalog it. It's going right into the exact file that you're you're you put the request in for. So, time savings tool definitely uh, very easy to use for an internal or even external with your customers. It's truly up to yourself. It's a it's a nice added feature that we included in the captor estimating. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you guys so much for um, telling us all about these uh, added features in the demonstration. I mean, I was very interested by the visual intelligence feature, and I know there's a lot of people on the call are as well. Uh, just a couple final questions before we wrap it all up here. And if you guys have any other questions, I'm going to run a poll right now. If there's any anyone would like to receive more information from Solera to talk about Captor, or if you'd like to reach out to any of these lovely individuals on the call, just click yes, and we'll make sure that your contact info gets passed on to them. And you can ask them any questions, talk their ear off all you want. So be sure to respond to that poll right now. Um, sorry, I kind of put you guys in the hot seat there, but I know they're okay with it. <laughs> so. Uh, just a couple more questions here for you guys. One of the questions from William Snow, um, another functionality kind of a setting. Uh, can Captor be set up for two stage paint to be the default setting rather than single stage? Yes, absolutely. Um, and so whoever <laughs> that was, just let us know. We'll, we'll make sure that that's set for you. That's not a problem at all. All right. And another one from Jonathan Pazmino. He says, do we get a notification about single use parts? Um, in our database, we identify all of the single use parts. So it will show that it is a single use part uh, when you select it. Okay, perfect. And Dale Kaiser would like to know what the cost per month is. <laughs> uh, cost per month on uh, Captor or the visual intelligence piece, uh, he I think. Specify. He might, we were talking about visual intelligence at the time. I, I would imagine it's the visual intelligence. They can contact uh, uh, your local sales rep and they'll be able to discuss it with you. But we do have an introductory price right now as we've just rolled this out. So uh, I would highly recommend being an early adopter, very little, uh, very little investment for the uh, return on investment for sure. Mm -hmm. 
if you are an early adopter, we want to talk to you because I want to know how this is working. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I want to see it in action in the field. But um, thank you guys again so much for showing us all about the new copter features. Like I said, I was very interested by it. You guys can watch this recording again if there was something that you thought of that you might have missed. Uh, this will be back on our website in about 24 hours. So just keep an eye out on Collision Repair Max Easy. And we'll have a recording here and um, be sure to answer the poll and the after webinar um, the after webinar survey to receive more information from Solera and the team. But Michelle, Massimo, David, thank you so much for being on the line with us today. Hope you have a good one. No, thank you ever, ever, thank for you. everyone that uh, attended. I know time is very precious and uh, I appreciate you guys spending the time with us. Absolutely. And we thank you so much for your audience participation too. <laughs> thank you. All right. Have Thanks a good so day, much. Everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.